So why do you have to lose weight? I have to lose weight because I can't wipe my ass. I can't wipe my own and I'm okay with it. Even for the internet, it's pretty shocking. Hey, welcome or welcome back. My name is Nadia, if you're new here. It's that time of year where fat acceptance tries extra hard to discourage us from accomplishing our weight loss goals or really discourage us from even having weight loss goals. So we are going to be looking into some of those TikToks today. And I want to relate this to something I've wanted to discuss for a while on here, which is crab mentality. So let's get into it. There is a big weight loss trend happening right now as there kind of always is. So I wanted to hop on and say you don't have to join them. I don't think these kind of reminders are as altruistic as they're designed to appear. Reminding other people that they don't need to do the thing that you don't want to do seems more like a form of self-soothing to me. It's not about protecting others. It's about her feeling more comfortable with her choices. You don't have to join people in shrinking their bodies in pursuit of an arbitrary beauty standard. It's not sustainable, and there are much, much better ways to pursue health than just shrinking your body. In 15 seconds, she has given us three reasons why we shouldn't try to lose weight without saying the words lose weight. Instead, she's using a euphemism. Shrinking your body shrinking your body, which is a bizarre way to describe losing weight, and that seems intentional. Euphemisms are used for a number of reasons. For example, we'll say someone got let go instead of fired because it sounds less harsh. In this case, I think fat acceptance uses shrinking your body and other euphemisms as a way to make weight loss sound way more absurd than it actually is. And if you are wanting to pursue thinness in pursuit of beauty, really examine and interrogate where these standards come from. A lot of it has rooting in white supremacy. And be really aware of who you're excluding in that pursuit of beauty. So the first three reasons we got from her to not lose weight were that it's for an arbitrary beauty standard. It's not sustainable, and there are better ways to pursue health. But 15 seconds later, she's telling us that the beauty standard isn't arbitrary, that it's actually rooted in white supremacy. And the not so subtle message here is that attempting to lose weight to be more attractive is actually aligning yourself with white supremacy. The tone here is actually a little bit threatening, and the threat is being labeled with a stigmatized identity. Thinness is not the be-all, end-all. It is not an indicator of living a great life. Being fat does not mean you are going to live a bad life or a life that is in any way less good than a thin person outside of systemic discrimination. If we continue to fight these biases and fight against these arbitrary standards, they will begin to crumble, and they already have. This is all a lot of manipulation to try and discourage people from doing something that she herself doesn't want to do. And the manipulation ends with a straight up lie about how obesity isn't going to affect you in any way outside of systemic discrimination. That is one big pile of sh Just a friendly reminder as we go into the new year and are bombarded by the diet industry, you do not need to lose weight. And there are ways that we can pursue our health goals this year that don't depend on a scale. Love you. This person doesn't know whether or not we need to lose weight, but they do know that other people choosing to lose weight makes them uncomfortable. So they're going to pretend that this is a friendly reminder for us when it's actually all about them and their issues around weight loss. Hi friends, happy 2024. Just wanted to pop on give you a couple of reminders. Number one, you don't have to make your body smaller in order to love it and respect it. Your body is perfect the way it is. So we've got another euphemism for lose weight that makes it sound a lot weirder than it actually is. To make your body smaller. Coupled with the proclamation that our bodies are perfect the way they are. Again, from someone who couldn't actually know that. So who is this really for? You're going to be seeing a lot of ads in the coming weeks for different diets and weight loss programs. You do not have to do them. Instead of making your intentions or resolutions to be to lose weight 
maybe reframe them and say, I want to learn a new sport or I want to try a new machine at the gym. This whole thing is really similar to splotches where it's meant to look like she's trying to help other people, but I think it's meant to hold other people back. Even if this person isn't consciously aware that she is threatened by other people losing weight, that is all I hear when I see this. Those will be much more sustainable goals than to simply lose weight. Because remember, 95% of diets don't work and you will gain back all the weight and usually more. Just remember, you will fail and you'll end up heavier than you were before is a pretty dark contrast to this whole hey bestie i'm just looking out for you sort of vibe hi friends friends don't actively discourage you from creating and achieving your goals that is not the behavior of a person or a group who's satisfied with their choices so satisfied that they want to make sure you get to be just as happy as them and not one bit more this is crab mentality or crabs in a bucket mentality. Crab mentality is a phenomenon named after a pattern of behavior that is observed in crabs when they're inside of a fisherman's bucket. It all starts with one crab trying to escape. Anytime that a crab tries to get out, the group will prevent it from escaping. Due to this phenomenon, a fisherman can leave the bucket without a lid, secure in the knowledge that every time that one of the crab tries to escape, the others will go out of their way to drag it back so we can't say why crabs pull other crabs back into the bucket with them, but it really looks like if I'm not getting out, you're not getting out either. So we've decided that this is a pretty good metaphor to describe the potential of collective group efforts and attitudes that seem to hinder or discourage the progress of other group members. This can happen in any group setting, but I have never seen crab mentality so openly displayed the way that it is in fat acceptance. Generally, people try to be less obvious about their goals to hold you back. The real tea is that nobody likes a pick me. This is a direct response to someone named Rosie. Her post said, full transparency, I have zero remorse or shame for being public about my weight loss. Two years ago, I couldn't even wipe my own. That's the tea. And the only reason she even had to make that post is because people in the body positivity and fat acceptance community have been giving her a hard time because she's losing weight. And I don't know if you all remember, but in one of our last videos, we had another fat activist laughing in our faces about how she just didn't believe people actually did this. I feel like I've seen posts that say stuff like, oh, the fatties are all mad at me and I betrayed them because I'm getting healthy now and I'm losing weight. I just don't believe that shit actually happens. Yeah, we know people do this. And in this case, this person was brave enough to share that they got to the point with their obesity that it was preventing them from being able to wipe themselves. That is a big deal. And I have a lot of respect for her being so open about that and taking control over her weight. But according to fat acceptance, this makes her a pick me bit. The real tea is that nobody likes a pick me. And not just that, but also ableist. 2024, ableism isn't cute. Punching down isn't cute. <sighs> you shouldn't be ashamed for losing weight. Of course you shouldn't be ashamed for losing weight. Do whatever the f you want with your body. You should be ashamed because you're an ableist. This is one of their most common tactics for keeping you in the bucket with them. They weaponize identity politics. Labeling someone with a stigmatized identity or threatening them with one is a way to coerce acceptance out of people who don't actually agree with fat acceptance. Some people witness their rhetoric and say, well, I don't wanna be ableist. I don't wanna be racist, so I guess I support fat acceptance. And this creator took it a step further to prove how not ableist she is by writing a blog titled, I can't wipe my own and I'm okay with it. That is a flex here. That is how far outside of reality we have strayed. Listen to her explain this a bit further even. Um, I want to ask though, if you had told a friend that and you said, I have to lose weight because I can't wipe my ass. And your friend had earnestly looked at you and said, so why do you have to lose weight? You know, there are other options to help you with that and there are stretches you can do to make that easier on you 
what would have been different there? The expression, with friends like these, who needs enemies, comes to mind. Lying to your friends doesn't make the world a better place, and choosing to remain overweight isn't the same as being disabled. That acceptance caught me off guard with this one. Even for the internet, it's pretty shocking. Genuinely, if I am wrong, correct me. But who is actually being empowered or elevated by this message other than the people who don't want to lose weight and also can't wipe themselves? To me, this is one for the archives. It is a piece of this movement's history that should help people in the future understand why it failed. Bye, pumpkin. We are losing fat role models left and right out here these days. So I want you and me Okay, to be on the same page here. This person is responding to Lizzo's recent weight loss in a way that probably seems reasonable to her. I will be a fatty until I die. I plan on dying a fatty. And if I don't be a fatty, it's because my doctor yelled at me enough into walking more and lifting heavy things. Is taking a walk or going to the gym really this bizarre for some people? And when we're pledging our literal bodies to a group, is group still the right word or have we shifted officially into cult territory? Like what a betrayal, building your whole thing on like, no, I'm very fat and happy and I work out constantly, I'm extremely happy. And then beep, don't bring that shit around me. Fatty until I die, I promise. Mwah. I've talked before on here about how I used to actually organize for an activist organization. I was really passionate about the cause I was advocating for, probably the way some of these people feel about fat acceptance. And I'm not going to say the name of the group, but ultimately I had the opportunity to get paid to work for an activist organization. But they had all of this paperwork where you had to just literally initial that you agreed with all of their very particular views on a number of different topics to work with them. <laughs> and that seemed really unnecessary and kind of creepy to me, not unlike asking people to remain a certain body size or only get larger if they want to be part of your group. We're going to go ahead and call this one Thank you for being here and making it all the way to the end if you're still here with me. Let me know your thoughts down below and give the video a like if you liked it. I'm curious to read what y'all's New Year's resolutions or goals for this year are, so definitely drop them down below. Don't let these people demotivate you. Weight loss is possible and it is very worth it to establish a healthy lifestyle. It doesn't matter what age you are, the benefits cannot be understated. So everyone take care, do what you need to do for yourself, and I'll talk to you in the next one.